Problem 5.1-2. The problem reads, derive equations for the internal resultant shear and bending moment in the beam. Plot the shear and bending moment diagrams for W0 equal to 3 kilonewtons per meter and L is equal to 4 meters. Here's our beam. It is simply supported with a pin at one end, a roller at the other. It has a triangular distributed load with the maximum distributed load being W0 and a length of L. Okay, the first step to finding equations for shear and moment diagram is to draw a free body diagram of the beam. Okay, I've drawn a free body diagram of the beam for the supports at A and B. I've replaced them with vertical reaction forces and I've shown the resultant force for the distributed load that's applied on the beam and that resultant force is located at a distance of two-thirds times the length from the left side. And I can calculate the magnitude of that resultant force. That's just the area under the distributed load. It's triangular, so we have one half times the height, W naught times the base, L. We get W naught times L over two. Next I'm going to solve for the reaction forces. I'm going to begin by summing the moments at A equal to zero to solve for my reaction force at B. Summing my moments at A, we have the resultant force acting in a negative direction times its moment arm, which is two-thirds times L, plus the reaction force at B, BY, times the moment arm, which is the length, equals to zero. And we can solve BY is equal to W naught times L divided by three. Now summing the forces in the Y direction, we have our reaction force at A minus the resultant force, which is W naught times L over two, plus the reaction at B, which we calculated previously, all equal to zero, we get the reaction at A is equal to W naught times L divided by six. The next step is to make a theoretical cut in the beam at a distance x and solve for the internal shear and moment. Because there is no internal point loads or any change in the loading between the supports, there's no discontinuities in our shear and moment diagram. So we can describe the internal shear with a single function. The same is true for the internal moment. That means we only need to cut the beam in one location. Now I've drawn my free body diagram of a cut section. And you can see it has the reaction force at A and the part of the distributed load up to the point of the cut. Now we need to find out what the maximum value is here on our distributed load. It's not going to be W0, it's going to be something less than that. And it's actually going to be a function of X. We can find what it is by using similar triangles. Let me show you. Here I've drawn the cut section of the beam and the full beam. Now we can say that the triangular distributed loads on both beams are similar triangles. And we can say that the ratio of the height of this triangle, which is a function of w in terms of x, divided by its length, which is x, is equal to the height of the triangle on this beam, which is w naught, divided by its length. And we can solve for w of x and get that it is equal to w naught times x divided by l. Does this equation make sense? Well, let's think about it. When x is equal to zero, w of x is equal to zero. Well, that's true. At x equals zero, there's no distributed load. When x is equal to l, then the l's cancel each other out, and we're left with w x is equal to w naught. And this is true. When x is equal to l, that's at the right end of the beam, the distributed load is w naught. So the height of our triangle here, we can write as w naught times x over l. The next step is to draw our shear and moment arrows using the positive sign convention. And now we're going to solve for shear and moment by using the equations of static equilibrium. Summing the forces in the y direction equals to zero will allow us to solve for our internal shear force. Let's look at the terms. This term here represents the support, the left side of the beam. This middle term, that is the term that represents the resultant force from the distributed load which is equal to one-half base times height. The height is this w naught x over L, and the base dimension is x minus shear, set it equal to zero. We can solve for shear. It is equal to w naught times L divided by six minus w naught times x squared over two L. Summing moments about the cut equal to zero will allow us to solve for the internal moment in terms of x. Let's look at the terms. The first term here is the reaction load at the left end of the beam times the moment arm. It's the distance from the cut, which is x. The next term is the resultant 
force from the distributed load. You can recognize that with these first three terms here. Times its moment arm, which is going to be one third of the distance x. So x over three plus m equals zero. For our moment equation, the moment is equal to w naught l over six times x minus w naught times x to the third power divided by six times l. And you've probably noticed that the shear function is the derivative of the moment function. Now let's plot this for a w naught value of three kilonewtons per meter and a value for our length of four meters. Now I'm going to plot the shear and moment diagrams for our beam using the equations for shear and moment that we previously derived. And I'm going to use for our distributed load, our maximum distributed load value of three kilonewtons per meter and the beam length of four meters. First I'm going to plot the shear diagram and I'm going to use this equation for shear that we derived and I'm going to plot that over a value for x from zero to four meters and I'll use increments of 0.2 meters so we have good clarity on our diagram. Now I've input the equation for internal shear which we derived here in this cell and I've fixed the values for w naught and l and I've referenced the value for x. And I'll copy that down and now I have all the values for shear as it changes along the length of the beam. So let's go ahead and plot that. So now I've used the data to plot the shear diagram, you can see it starts at 2 when x is 0 and ends at negative 4 when x is equal to 4. Now let's use our moment equation to get values for moment along the length of the beam and then plot it. So now I've input into the cell the equation that we derived for the internal moment and I've used these values for w naught and l and I've fixed them in with a variable x. Now I'll copy that down. Now let's go ahead and plot the moment diagram. So now I've plotted my moment diagram based on the data we generated using our moment equation. And you can see the moment begins at zero, it ends at zero, and it has a maximum here somewhere between two and two and a half. And that corresponds to the point on the shear diagram where the shear goes to zero. And we're done.